Hello and welcome to episode 7 of the Squadcast, the official podcast of Glasgow Warriors. Thank you to everybody who has listened in over the past six weeks or so. Thank you to everybody who also listened in to our best of the Squadcast package last week, as we're now calling it. I'm still flying solo this week, as Murphy is fresh off making his Scotland debut at the weekend against Fiji. How good was he when he came on? Good on yourself, Murphy. And is still with the rest of the Scotland squad preparing for this weekend's massive game against the All Blacks at BT Murrayfield, live on Amazon Prime Video this Sunday afternoon. However, fear not, we are joined by a very special guest for our latest episode of the Squadcast. And it's somebody that a lot of you listening will know very well indeed. He's a man who's played 92 times for Glasgow has played in four Commonwealth games. I'm looking at him very questioningly over the side here. And is one of, of Scotland Sevens' greatest ever players, if I do say so myself. And I'm, he hasn't paid me a single penny for this introduction. So, Lee Jones, how are you? I'm very good, thanks. Good to be here. Um, what an introduction. Yeah, thank you. I was going to say, I'm, thank you to my research assistant, Messrs Google and Wikipedia, for that one. But first things first, obviously, you've, you've just announced your retirement from, from rugby. How's the first couple of weeks been as a... As a retired rugby player, uh, so far so good. Um, yeah, no, it's a, it's a, I guess it's a strange time after having done it for so long. But uh, my body is definitely feeling good. Um, even just a couple of a month or two, um, yeah, post rugby. That's one thing I've noticed is uh, I'm waking up feeling a wee bit better in the mornings. But um, yeah, so far so good. What's the what's the main difference that you feel? Is, what, is there any particular part of your body that, that's feeling a little bit better? Is it just the general aches and pains that are, are no longer oh, there? Craig, I got to the stage where there was too many things to count and <laughs> things that things that I didn't even notice. So you get to still like I, I try to go to the gym the past few weeks and and then I realise oh that is actually sore as well. That was quite sore. Uh, oh yeah, that's also sore. So uh, we'll just cross <laughs> that off the list. But um, nah, just general general well being is uh, is good. Yeah. I was going to say you're, you're enjoying the, the peace and quiet of, of uh, life after rugby, but we should also touch on the fact that yourself and, and Charlene are expecting in the not too distant future as well. Yeah, so uh, yeah, all at once. So <laughs> just uh, no pressure. <laughs> you don't do things uh, like nah, No pressure to to get myself sorted. I thought right, we need to we need to have something going on. So um, no, that will <laughs> um, that will definitely keep us busy um, in the lead up to well, I guess into the new year. So. Um, there'll be there'll be plenty to getting on with um, be getting on with I'm sure. Okay, I'm sure Charlene's putting you to good use already from a from a preparing everything point of view. Yes, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> no um, doubt but we'll, oh, we'll we'll get there. It'll be fine. I'm just like I'm like look, it'll be fine. We'll uh, we'll cross that cross the bridge when we come to it, whatever that bridge may be. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm very much of the way like um, oh, it'll be yeah, it'll all be it'll all be fine. Obviously, we're in a bit of a break ourselves at the minute. But have you been to you've been back to Scotland since you've uh, sort of I was about to say retired since you left the club and, and went to, to Sevens? You've you presented the match ball, I know. Um, but have you been in as a as a fan at any point? Uh, since I presented the ball, I don't think I've been back as a fan. If it's I try and catch the games on TV um, when I can. Um, so no, it's nice to it's nice to stay in touch and see what the the boys are up to but it's uh, it's a young crowd these days and uh, it's uh, the more the more i uh, kind of keep an eye over it the, the older it makes me feel so uh, yeah but no it's good it's been good to watch the boys um this season particularly at home um you know some guys that were coming through just as i was kind of on the way out but are really starting to um you know perform in the jersey and uh, it's good to see some some fantastic performances. I was just going to touch on that. Obviously, you had guys like Rufus and Ollie coming through just in your in your last season. Did you have a, a bit of a smile on your face when Ollie went over for the try against Australia as well? Oh, it's awesome! Such a good finish as well. So no, I was I was pleased to see that. And I guess in the in the yeah, like you say, the the tail end of my Glasgow career, Ollie was just coming through. He had his first game. He had a handful of games at the end of that season. Um, but he's just he's come into his own since then. Um, physically, he's come on a lot, um, and you can see that he's looking strong. He's looking fast, and oh, I was so chuffed for him just to his home debut at Murrayfield as well to get to get a, and finish a try like that as well was uh, it was class. So um, no, I chuffed for him. So obviously, for everybody listening to the Squadcast regularly, you know how it works by now. In front of myself, we've got a. A hat full of, of squad cast scenarios. We're going to change up slightly a little bit today. Uh, obviously, Lee is, is no longer a current warrior. 
Um, but the the questions I'm going to ask, you can answer with any of your your teammates from your time at Glasgow over the six seven years you were you were with us. Um, your job, as I've said to everybody else that's been on the, the podcast so far, is to to make sure the listeners are suitably entertained and do not turn off at this juncture. No pressure. <laughs> All right, jump into to number one. How many que- how many questions are in there? What, uh... there? There are a fair number in this hat, to be honest with you. We're not going to get you through all of them because you could be here all week. Um, but to be fair, we've got a couple of weeks until our next game. We've got time. <laughs> anyway, your first question. Uh, who is the one teammate that you'd want to have your back? Want to have my back? Whoa. Uh... I think uh, when you're thinking of that, you're probably thinking it's it's a back row player, it's somebody that's uh, in in amongst it during a game uh, that can probably stand up to one of the other biggest guys on the field. I guess that's who you're talking about when you want someone to have your back. Eh? So uh, I'm thinking back row. I'm thinking uh, it's big. Right? Like Ryan Wilson's always a good one to have, just because he's he's niggly for the opposition, isn't he? So I, I'm I'm sure that will shock every listener going that you you've picked Mr. Wilson for that one. Always, like you said, always seems to be in the middle of it. I um, Richie Gray purely or Johnny Richie or Johnny just purely for stature, I would say. <laughs> um, and Rob Harley is always good to have on your side because you know he's just he's just on a level he's on a level nothing's gonna phase him so if he's got your back you're probably in a good spot as well obviously yourself as a as a winger you're usually fairly removed from all the sort of niggle and handbags in the in the tight five but was there any any instances in particular that come to mind that you've had to call on the services of mr harley or wilson or any along those lines Uh... Nah, I think the, the further I got throughout my career, like if we're talking from like when I was a lot younger, um, I think I mellowed out a lot. <laughs> by the time I got, by the time like I moved into, we we're talking like high school rugby, it could have been a bit niggly, but like see, as I got into professional rugby, I, I, I got to the stage where I was like, nah, let's just stand back and watch. And you've kind of got that seat on the wing <laughs> in terms of like it's normally happening. You kind of look across and you can, Half the time you can just chat to your opposite man and be like, what are these boys up to sort of thing. So, um, no, I, I can't remember ever getting, uh, ever getting too involved. Oh, there's always, obviously, there's, there's bits here and there. I remember there was a home game against the Cheetahs. I think this won't be too long ago. The guy tried to trip me as the ball had went into touch or something. I turned around, I, it got me, it got me and I, th- I threw the ball threw the ball back at him and I think it landed, hit him off the head or something and the ref, I think he gave a penalty against me, I could not believe it, I was like, and everybody was like, oh, what's going on there, eh? Like, <laughs> lost the head of it there, like, so out of character, but, um, so nah, that that wasn't a fun uh, record, that's probably as close as we got um, to anything. Yeah, we'll, we'll bring it back for a second episode when we delve into Lee Jones, the hothead at high school rugby, because I think there's probably more into, more into that, but we'll keep that one there. <laughs> Hey, well, move you on to your your second one. Um, if I can unravel these out the hat, try to do this one handed is a bit of a. I should usually have got Murphy to do this. I feel like I probably know the answer to this one already because everybody tends to go with the same answer for this one. But who would be your phone a friend on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? What did you think my answer was going to be? I feel like if I say this, it's going to give away your your potential. But everybody I've ever asked that question to has always gone with Rob Harley. Yeah, bro, that's a, that's the one that jumps to mind. <laughs> just a just a wealth, a wealth of knowledge. Um, I, I'd I'd back him to. Ah, that's your safest bet. It is your safest yeah. bet, unless um, it depends the subject of the question. Yeah. If it was obviously, um, and there's me trying to think of somebody else that might be better on a on a subject than. <laughs> <laughs> than Rob, but it could be struggling. Um, so I, yeah, no, nah, nailed it. Rob Harley. Yeah. He's, he's a pretty pretty safe bet for, for a lot of subjects, I think, from, from what people have been saying, whether it's classic French literature to the modern politics of southern African regions or something along those lines. He seems to have an answer for everything, from what I remember. Uh, uh, you're probably right on that. He's, um, he's well-read um, books in different languages. Like, aye. Uh, 
anything. I'd probably go towards Rob, and I'm and I'm I am racking my brains for someone else, but I'm battling. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, boys, I'm uh, I'm battling. Right, what about yourself? What would, if you were a phone a friend on millionaire? What would be your your specialist subject, as it were? Oh, that's probably more mastermind subject. than who wants to be a millionaire, to be fair. But. I was actually had I watched mastermind. It was on a couple of nights ago, and I've never I don't think I've ever watched mastermind that it was on. I, the yeah. boy's specialist subject was so obscure. I can't even remember what it was. <laughs> um, oh, specialist subject. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, nah. I don't know, Craig. I'm I'm struggling. <laughs> I'm, I'm struggling that. I'll get back to you. I'll keep. I'll subconsciously keep thinking about that. And by the end, of, keep going. yeah, by the end of the podcast, I might have one for you. We'll come back to that. Either that, or we come back for a second episode at some point. You never know. Oh. Mm-hmm. See how they see how they see how they <laughs> see how the crowd respond to this one. I'm not holding oh, out much hope. I love it. <laughs> Question number three. Again, you should have plenty of material for this one. So. Funniest thing you've ever seen on the pitch from one of your Glasgow Warriors teammates? Oh, from, yeah. So this is one I should have so much for this. My memory is so bad on these things. It's like funny things on a rugby field. Uh, like I've got some funny incidents, probably. Maybe not involving teammates. Funny incidents <laughs> like remembering the when the fire alarm went off 1872 cup against them i was just going to ask you about that one yeah uh, was it like it was like three minutes before half time and uh i think we were in the lead anyway fire alarms went off and kind of everybody's looking at each other and you think surely like surely not and like surely we'll be safe out here on the pitch but um that sticks in the mind a wee bit um there was another one leinster at the rds um, tight game as well. We'd scored. I think we'd just come right back into it. Within another score, there's five minutes left to play, and the lights went out. It's like that somebody's uh, yeah. somebody's pulled the plug behind the scenes. Oh, Glasgow come back into it. Pull the, the lights went out. We we stood about for around like 10, 15 minutes. It's freezing cold, um, and then. I eventually got them back on and played like the last five minutes of the game, but we'd just been standing about for 10, 15 minutes. So that was a bit strange. Um, other funny ones, like, I'm trying to think. I don't think I was on the pitch at the time, but I've seen the video a few times. Rob Harley, um, I think it was against Dragons, just blatantly getting punched in the face and just not bothered, <laughs> just taking it. Um that, that that's pretty funny. I've seen like <laughs> Rob provides a good bit of uh, entertainment. Yeah. Uh, there was the one as well. Uh, was 1872 Cup at Murrayfield, and um, obviously scrum half has to use it in five seconds, and and so Rob started counting down the the refs here: five, four, <laughs> three, two, one, minus one, minus two. <laughs> like and it, I think that was during COVID time, so aye, no crowd. Yeah. So you remember it. You like you can hear him on the refs mic, like like you said. But that's his kind of character. Oh, right. um, other funny things. Uh, aye, that's that's probably me. There'll be many more, but like I say, my memory is my memory is not yeah. great. I, I do I do remember the the fire alarm game at Scottsdale for the, the Edinburgh game and I was actually going to ask you this because I seem to remember you scored right at the end of that one as well what what did what was going through your minds your minds at that point obviously it's like you said it's not something that happens too often although I think Edinburgh had it in pre-season this year as well um but do, do you just carry on do you follow each other who's who's taking the lead at that point uh, I can't hear I can't remember I just remember thinking like like I say you're thinking surely <laughs> surely we're not going to eva- evacuate the whole place like and then because i like to say you feel relatively safe from fire when you're standing on the middle of a rugby pitch um <laughs> and anyway, maybe we could have just kept playing but um and i remember we went across to into the clubhouse inside i think and then they decided now we can we'll go back into change rooms and sort of sort ourselves out for the second game but um it's a good excuse if you were losing the game um to, to, or winning the game, sorry, to say, well, well, let's just call it there. But I think the game has to go past a certain point, so 
Um, aye, definitely an interesting one. As we, fingers crossed it's not something that happens again anytime soon because that's, uh, that's, that's both a momentum killer and also we're getting into December in Glasgow. I don't think anybody wants to be standing around for too long at any point. No, especially when you're used to just standing on the wing as well. It's like <laughs> absolutely freezing. Um, you got to keep yourself warm. Aye, <laughs> definitely. All right, move on to your next one. I love the unknown, just the unknown. Like I don't know, maybe you've, maybe you have got these all sorted, but I believe I, that you're, you're in gen- blind. Genuinely don't. I've, I've, I can show you the. There's, there's, that's, that's what I'm pulling them out of at the minute. There you go. That's a full on. There's a, there's a lot. There's a few of them in it there. It keeps getting added to over time. To be honest with you, Lee, that's the. All right, pick one skill that a teammate of yours has or had if they're retired that you would like to have. This can be rugby related. This can be off the pitch. It can be anything you, you fancy whatsoever. Um, yeah. Right. Let's go. Right, we'll go off pitch. I think. Um, trying to think of someone that's got. I'd love to be able to sing. Someone that's got a good voice. But Ryan Wilson was a good front man. Yep. Wasn't he for the band um, back then? Uh, Rob Harley. This is like the Rob Harley show, isn't it? <laughs> um, <laughs> he does a great rendition of um, Candy Shop Fifty Cent. Uh, <laughs> I'd be a good talent. I'd be a good talent to have. Um, anyone else? Surely there's some. Must be some talented boys in there. Obviously, some talented rugby players. If we're talking rugby, you got to look at someone like Nico, just for just outrageous ability. Yeah. Um. Outrageous ability between him and and Nax, uh, Leone Nakarawa. Um. They could kind of they could do things in the rugby field that like you could only probably ever dream of pulling off. Like. Um, and giggling at the same time as well, <laughs> which is a, which I think is a talent in itself. Um, uh, but when you're on the pitch with those two, I mean, we're we're sat in the stands. We've got no idea what they're going to do next. Do you have any idea what Leone and Nico are going to do next at that point? Or are you just following and seeing what happens? No, nah, nah, I, d- I don't think they do either. To be honest, that's the <laughs> then that's the beauty of it. They just play. They just play what they see. I, I'd like completely just play in the moment. Um, no like preconception of what's going on. Um, you did. It was great playing on the wing outside Leone, because you knew if he he was often in that like second to last position, and he you knew that if you were on the wing and he's got he's in second last, he would always attract that last defender and then just almost just drop it into your drop it into your hands so <laughs> you could come to expect that from Leone he would he would go between those last two defenders drop it in and that's like that's a dream for a winger because essentially he's beating your man you know for you yeah. um, often you've got a lot to do when you still get the ball but Leone just made it I guess so much easier um, and Nico I he doesn't know what's happening either but uh, I joy a joy <laughs> to a joy to watch and a, a joy to play with as well most of the time I'll uh, rewind back to your, your your first point as well about the the scrum bags as well obviously I wouldn't be allowed I think I'd probably be hunted down by a lynch mob if I was letting you off here without talking about the scrum bags but when you look back on that and you look back on the fact that you had a full gig at the Hard Rock Cafe raising I want to say about £10,000 for the Children's Hospital I could be wrong on that um, just what are your, your main memories of that is it just the jam with the guys in the, the studio or is it the event? Do you remember much of the event? What's the ah uh, the the, uh, the whole thing? To be honest, the whole thing was like, ah, uh, it was awesome. Like going, if you're going back to talent as well, like Callum Gibbons' talent for playing the guitar was like, was, I'd probably take that over any of the other <laughs> stuff I mentioned. That just come to mind. Like he was ridiculously talented. Um, aye, the whole thing like it was a it was probably a bit of a journey because it started off as someone suggested it as an, we were mucking about in the what was the boot room at Scottston to begin with um, after training here and there and then it, it kind of grew arms and legs once someone had suggested that um, you know we could we could do something for the for the children's hospital for the charity and then once the kind of promoters got involved we were like right this could actually happen but the, the probably the journey from where we were at at the beginning 
to where we got to the stage where you could say it maybe scraped past as a, you know, that was an acceptable, <laughs> acceptable <laughs> performance. Like where we come from, honestly, it was ridiculous. Like there was sometimes we were leaving the um, the practice, but just like looking at each other, thinking, I don't know if we can if we can keep going with this thing. But we persisted, and it took a few months, but. Um, aye, that was that was unbelievable. Like for someone like so Petrus Duplessis, who's involved, he's obviously had some like career. He'll have career highlights, like a ridiculous set of career highlights, the things he's done. And he was up there where like that was one of the like top three nights of my life, <laughs> right there. Uh, and he'll have had some good nights, so uh, that probably puts it into perspective a wee bit. I think you're selling yourself short when you call it acceptable performance. I mean, I was I was there. It was a great gig. Like. I had a great time so you can you can take that from audience testimony from from myself and i'm sure half the listeners will also say that as well oh if you'd been there on the if you'd been there on the first practice session you'd have been <laughs> you'd have been worrying anyway yeah <laughs> <laughs> moving on swiftly uh who is the squad's biggest prankster now again you can take this from any point in your glasgow warriors career but who is the one that you always had to keep an eye on for the the practical jokes or anything along those lines uh, obvi more recently, obvious one is Ryan Wilson springs to mind. Uh, he's been fairly active recently <laughs> as well, hasn't he? Yeah. So I've seen from social media. Um, if oh, taking it back a wee bit further, um, do you know actually Dougie Mills, Shizzle, All right. Kit Man. Um, so he would. Um, I've heard a few stories. I don't know if I've ever seen it, but. Um, James Eddy used to talk about this and he got done by it, I think, way back was when Shizzle used to do the rubs on away games. So he'd get his yeah. he'd get his table set up, arrive at the hotel, a couple of boys would get rubs. Um and there was kinda there was a sort of a, a hierarchy in it, right? Boys that had been about a bit would be kinda get preference and that, just the way it should work. Uh but you'd always get like Maybe one of the younger boys first time in be like, oh, oh that sounds good. I'll have a wee rub on the on the calf, so I'll jump on shizzle and uh so in, in, in James's words he'd um he'd say that I've sort of jumped on and shizzle's like ah, he's fires into it straight away and um unbeknown to him he's he's got some chocolate buttons and has just been they've 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 melted in nicely. He's been uh, <laughs> in with a massage oil as well, so he's covered in chocolate buttons. There's uh, apparently there's been jam, honey, oh. um, any other condiments that are readily available in a hotel. Uh, Shizzle would get involved, and uh, the, you wouldn't realise until you'd stand up. Yeah, great rub, thanks Shizzle, and then pull the shorts up, and uh, <laughs> aye, away you go. So. Uh, Nah, that always used to tickle me. I was never subject to it, but it always used to tickle me. I managed to escape that one. Aye, yeah. Oh, no, that's uh, <laughs> Note to self, don't go for a massage with shiz at any point. Your next one up, um, I guess it's quite a, quite a good one because you've got a fair amount to choose from, I'd imagine, but who is your closest friend in the squad? So again, from, from any time at Glasgow Warriors. Uh, oh, good question. I think... Um, more recently, <laughs> given my injury history, it'd probably be one of the physios. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to the physio well, team. Shout out to the physio team, I um, <laughs> made a good few friends there. <laughs> physios in S and C. Um, uh, um, someone that helped me out a lot when I first came to the club um, was I mentioned it before James Eddy. Um, yeah, he was a he was a big help. I, I was obviously moving to Glasgow from Edinburgh at the time, and he was a big help in sorting me out with anything, pretty much. Like he kind of um, he always knows someone that if you need anything, he can he can sort you out. And uh, yeah. I moved just round the corner from him, so he was a big help um, and a good mate when I first came across. Um, and then I'm trying to think so. Who used to sit next? So in the changing room, Alex Allen was a bit of a mainstay on my right hand side in yep. the changing room uh, throughout my time. And my, on my left hand side, that was that was a turbulent seat. Actually, that changed uh, <laughs> <laughs> changed hands a few times over the years. There was a few people trying to tell you something. Lee, no, 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 nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with me. Um, 
I think Sean Kennedy's in there now. He's held it for a wee while, so he's he's going strong. Um, but there's a few guys in there. Um, yeah, uh, Rob Rob was a good mate. Rob Harley um, can always tap in. It's a good mate to have um, in case you need to phone him on who wants yeah, to be a millionaire. Exactly. I was going to say, you never keep your options open on that one. Just from leading back as well, obviously we've talked about, about with James before and various different, various different interviews and things like that, but I, just one of the sort of standouts from Glasgow rugby from that sort of early 2000s, late 2000s era. What were your, your first impressions of, of him when you first made the move across? Uh, I think I'd maybe, so I think I'd maybe played sevens with James uh, when I was uh, yep. d- talking years and years and years ago when he was at Glasgow, I was at Edinburgh. <laughs> um, aye, but uh, aye, good guy, good guy. Um, just kind of time for everyone sort of thing you know and uh, like I say he was always kind of on hand to, to help out if anybody needed anything or um, if there was anything where he could make a quick bit of cash James would be in on it he would always be trying to sell you something um, probably a wee bit <laughs> of his benefit but um, I just a, just a good good club guy and um, some player as well and um, played a lot of sevens with him um, and yep. a handful of the Warriors as well and if you need fish if you need if man. you need fish he's your man right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with your your last one um, if I can again undo this at all elegantly which is I'm failing in the background well, this could be an interesting one this is probably going to test your memory again to be honest with you but fairly apt given we've just passed Halloween um, which teammate do you think would absolutely nail fancy dress? You know, I'm guessing you've probably been on a few Halloween and Christmas nights out over the years. Are there any that, that spring to mind? Oh, uh, the most recent one, the most recent one I was on, I really enjoyed um, George Horn as Voldemort. It was pretty good. Like, <laughs> like really good. Yeah. Really good. And they got right into character. That would be up there. Yeah. Um, Callum Gibbons was... I think he wanted to be Gandalf, but um, I think he looked more Dumbledore. So um, he, got a bit, he got a wee bit of stick for that. Um, who else? I went. The last one I was, I went as Aladdin. Um, we went as Aladdin and Jasmine, myself and Charlene, flying carpet included. Um, nice. Aye. Uh, Johnny Matthews, Johnny Matthews went as the because he's a scouser. Went as uh, <laughs> went as the chef from Scotland, who's a scouser. <laughs> Jack, uh, Jack the chef. So got his chef lights on, and uh, I think it was like a last minute effort, but it was brilliant, um, and got the train through. So I there's there's a handful of fancy dress for you. That's that's a full on rogues gallery you've got to go on there as well. To be fair, that's a that's a good effort. I, I'm still slightly so I've, i just saw the, the george horn voldemort one fairly recently and i'm still slightly in admiration slash scarred for life by it so it's a it's a good effort from him <laughs> well that's a pretty high note to to end on especially since we've now got dished out on yourself as uh, as aladdin so that's that's aladdin 2 coming soon yeah <laughs> but thanks very much to to lee just before we head out what's the what's the plans for yourself now obviously enjoying retirement and then Eyes on the future, what's the next? Yeah, rest the body up a wee bit. Um, and then, yeah, onto something else. Rugby-wise, I think um, I think it's still got a part to play. Um, with me, just not sure in what kind of, and what guys yet. So kind of take a step back and see, see where that sits with things. Um, and then, yeah, onto, onto some other stuff that we're just trying to figure out at the moment. But um, it's I'm looking forward to I just throw myself into something else. Well, whatever that something else is, we we'll look forward to, to seeing what you make of it. And again, look forward to, to having you back at Scots at some point in the near future. We're going to take a week off next week from the Squadcast, but then we'll be right back at it in the week leading up to our BKT URC match against Leinster in Dublin. Until then, though, he's been Lee Jones. I've been Craig Wright, and this has been the Glasgow Warriors Squadcast. Thank you.